This video is going to be basically a review, but not the book review. It's going to be the movie review of Richard Lehman's In the Dark. Okay, so it's on YouTube. I'll include a link um, in the description, but oh, wow, this movie was like beyond my expectations because it was low budget, black and white, shot by film students and I'm not sure if they were graduates or not but they went to some university in uh, Illinois which is the hometown of Richard Lehman obviously and anyways they um, for years been thinking they wanted to make um, a movie based on Richard Lehman book and they wanted one that would fit a budget that they could do and you know, the book couldn't be like too long because, you know, they were had limited time to do it. So basically, like, most of the actors like shot a day and in a day their parts, but the main character didn't, Jane. And the actress is like in a few other movies I looked up online and like, there's this one guy in it who became kind of successful and he's in some major movies now. And he was the guy who worked with Master Mog of games. So anyways, everyone from the movie, most of them are just random people, then they've never been anything else but this. But oh my god, I was so shocked. Oh my god, like, I was surprised that like, since it's like low budget and the average film weren't pay much, that they were like, this good. Like, okay, the actress who played Jane, I can't remember her name, but she was as good. Like. You know, I can't remember the director's names, but um, uh, the director, his brother helped him produce it, and they're both two of the bad guys in it. But anyways, the movie, I've seen twice already recently, I'm going to do a reread on the book, because I read it almost six months ago, the very beginning of May. It's amazing, definitely my favorite Richard Lehman book, and one of my favorite books ever. Um, I was surprised that the movie, like... For being like for the book being over 500 pages like the movie being about two hours like just like four minutes short besides the ending being changed it was r really good what i didn't like even though the ending was good i'm surprised that they had to change it like they could have had an alternative and alternate ending you know if they could have budgeted it i don't know but the ending was good it just wasn't the same as a book which gives me like m makes me give the movie a lower rating what i loved about the movie is that Richard Lehman, uh, besides him actually liking it, which made me want to see it, when I finally found it, like I didn't until someone put it up on YouTube. And anyways, I was just really surprised that, like they faithfully followed the book for the most part, but what they didn't do was like, you know, the way they shot it, it was, sometimes it was difficult to hear what the actors were saying, but like it was filmed in a lot of the places that like take place in the book right because it takes place in Chicago just like in the movie where they filmed so what I really liked was that um the like how the main actress who played Jane how she was like you know like really dedicated and she actually went to film school so she was pretty good at her role but the thing is the guy who played Brace her main sidekick I didn't really like him and I don't like how the book doesn't reveal more about the master of games at the end, like, you know, because in the book they do. Um, I like both endings, but I don't know why they had to change the ending in the movie. What I really liked about um, In the Dark, the movie, was that the part where she goes to rescue those girls in that, like, house in the middle of nowhere that those guys are, three guys are keeping those girls hostage, I was like... I was like surprised like that they actually could do the like the girl the missing arm or was it her yeah, no she's missing her leg and she was like eating her one of her arms like it was really disturbing but I expected it to be gory or, like even though it's black and white you barely see any blood through the whole movie and Richard Lamb is really gory and like ugh. I was just so surprised but anyways like the good thing about the movie is that it did follow a lot of what happens in the book. Um, the guy who works for the Master of Games, he was a good actor, and like he has his whole face and body covered with like latex bondage, like, and he was pretty cute. Like he kind of reminded me of young Marilyn Manson, but covered all in bondage. 
And I just really loved it because I thought it was just like, okay, this guy is pretty cute. Like you're supposed to hate him, but he's pretty cute. And Jane is a very arrogant, like she's just fueled by money and like we get anyone would be like that. Like of course she wants money and it's, it seems like easy money to do these things and it doesn't seem evil sin or sinister at first, you know? Like she has to find what book, like the clue in the note says to find and then after that it goes like that she has to like stay overnight in haunted houses and embrace the guy who likes her and meets her at the library does, when she's a librarian. He, do, he doesn't want him to do it and he gets, gets in the way so he's like a pain, you know? Like, she still wants to stay friends with him. And what's really annoying is that she plays this stupid game of this guy running throughout the movie. I think it's really dumb. Like, the Master of Games gave it to her. But, like, in the book and in the movie, Jane is an idiot because she lets this guy, like, she invites him to her home. Like, she, and, and she intentionally doesn't, like, lock her door or lock her windows. And the guy who works for Master of Games gets into her house, right? And then he steals, uh, this videotape, like she's filming it, and then she's like, try, like she wants to film overnight, like to prove that he snuck in, because he's saying that like, yeah, she hadn't been good, a good girl, whatever, that he's gonna visit her in her sleep or whatever. So, yeah, so she tried to take a bunch of like, uh, not sleeping pills, but those active, like those 24 hour energy things, but they're like pills, and not a drink, and like, and then she still falls asleep, and the the guy who works for Master of Games, I can't remember his real name. But he, like, sneaks in and tries to, like, you know, like, he attacks her. Like, she wakes up, like, one time when he's, one of the times he's in her house. And so he stamps her with some kind of shot. Like, she was just dumb to unlock her doors and everything. You know? And then she won't listen to the Master Games anymore after the while, which is stupid because he won't let her stop playing the game. So, anyway. It's just really weird, like, how some of the actors and the like, characters like ugh, like some of the girls she rescues in the house of torture or whatever like some of them are really bad actresses <laughs> and um she's pretty dumb to just go into this house like like the master game says i hope we make it out of this house alive like there's girls that need to be rescued which is weird he's a horrible sinister man why would he want her to rescue these girls you know and like he's in love with her and he like in her sleep like the the assistant of the master games like he sneaks into her house and he writes like notes on her like she writes notes on her stomach with like black lipstick and black eye pencil and like and so then he writes back and she sees it the next day he writes on her back and then she sees what he writes it's really really creepy and it's weird like i'm i like it and I'm gonna watch it again, but it's not like a movie I rewatch re like a hundred times, you know, I watch it every once in a while. But, um, I think the movie, I'd give it, I liked it better the first time than the second. Like, if they didn't show graphically, like, the fact that she enters that dog because, like, she has to get into that car the dog is to get that money and the letter, like, I don't know. And besides changing the scene where she has to, like, get that money and letter that the homeless man stole and, like, she like attacks one of them but like the way it was shot like the, the scene was changed and it was different in the book a bit and like besides that all that and the ending change and some of the bad acting I would give it after two viewings and be able to like you know really think about it like, the last time I watched it was a couple weeks ago I would think I'd rate it a B um so um, it's decent to watch at least once, and you can watch it for free on YouTube. So, and know that Richard Lehman watched at least four times before her, he died, because he put in his only, like, video interview, Dark Dreamers, that he loved it, and he watched it, like, four times. He was gonna watch it again soon, but this was, like, a few months before he died. And anyways, one of the time he watched it with a horror author and friend, Brian Keane. And so, yeah, he likes the movie a lot. His family likes it. And it's played at a few horror film festivals, but I definitely think it should be playing at horror conventions, every horror film festival. It was just like, it's an amazing book because like I expected to like, like the movie, but like dislike it more because I just love the book so much more, especially if it's one of my favorite authors. And Richard Lehman's definitely my favorite author, but I really hate how like, like most of his movies haven't been made into books. I mean, books haven't been made to movies, so I'm gonna do future videos like one, what directors I think should direct virtual movies or like or series, like which ones should be movies and which ones should be TV series, and the top books of each like director that should direct into a movie and why I think they should direct. 
But yeah, definitely I'm gonna make a video of a book, reviewing the book. But one of the directors I think should definitely direct any Richard Layman, especially The Beast House, would be the director of The Human, uh, The Human Centipede. Though all those movies, he's fucking twisted. And he would stay faithful to Richard Layman's book being so gory and disturbing. So definitely read Richard Layman. Like, I have like only like, less than a dozen of his books left. And I'm sad because then after that I can only reread re ones. And I've already reread What's Our Dark. I read, finally got the uncut and edited version. Because he's been censored so heavily in America because he's that disturbing. Like, he is way, way better than Stephen King and Dean Koontz, because he's way warrior and better. And Jack Ketchum, like he's on his level, except even more like disturbing in his mind and more creative and his punt lines and everything, in characters even better than Jack Ketchum. So definitely Richard Lehman and you should definitely check him out. And like literally, he's also run under the name Carla Lehman for two romance books. Can't find them anywhere, they're out of print. And you can't even get them online, like, not even legally. And Carl Lehman, he wrote two young adult novels. One of them's pretty cheap online, the other one's like $20. And what the one that's funny, I'm gonna buy it soon and read it. And then there's also a book he wrote on writing. It's nonfiction. I have it. I have the digital PDF, Kindle version of it. And I found it online for free because you can't find it through the Kindle store. And Richard Lehman also wrote a kid's book, The Halloween Mouse, which I don't have because it's 50 bucks or more online, but I'm going to own it soon, and I'm rent it from the library every, like, a few times a year. So, yeah. Um, so you should definitely check him out, and, like, all his books I recommend. Like, don't be, like, intimidated by length. And I usually read books really fast, but with the Chalamet and other favorite authors, I read slow so I can appreciate, you know, every, like, and really really understand what's going on, you know, because I don't want to finish them so soon because then there's less stuff for me to read and I don't want to, like, get uh, through all his books so fast because that would suck because, like, then what left do I have by him to read? So, um, my favorite book of his, In the Dark, that's the number one book you should check out of his. And, like, honestly, his longer books are the ones that develop more of a fuller plot and storyline and you really get to know the characters. So, I definitely recommend, recommend him to anyone, especially if you like graphic, intense, gory descriptions. You'd love him. 